Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar Channel, and in today's video, I'll talk about what you might want to say to your teen or preteen about cursing and code switching. Truth be told, I don't really swear that much. I'm definitely a little looser if I have a beer or two in me, but it's not really baked into my natural style of speech. Growing up, my parents were at opposite ends of the cussing spectrum. My dad swore like a sailor, still does, and three-year-old me could recite his favorite string of pretty colorful seven curse words like a pro. My mom was never comfortable with it, and it showed. At one point, in a fit of pique, she called one of us, can't remember who, um, a piece of shit, and it sounded so weird coming out of her mouth, and she seemed so uncomfortable saying it that we all just stopped and laughed for like five minutes. It was probably not exactly the effect that she was intending. So at any rate, I tell my kids, curse words are just words like any other. They don't have any intrinsic value. They take on whatever meaning is ascribed to them by whomever you're talking to. That said, some people are very offended by curse words and some words are obviously considered much worse than others. So this is an area where I think it makes sense to be practical. Your kids are going to hear curse words starting at a pretty young age, and by the time they're in middle school, their friends, and most likely they, will be cussing up a storm when adults aren't around. I find that it actually starts on social media and then graduates into face-to-face -face communication. The thing is, people will judge you by what you wear, who you hang out with, and how you speak. If you are saying a bunch of what they consider to be offensive things, they are not going to think that you are a nice person. This is particularly true of adults who might have an impact on the opportunities that you have as a young person, your grades, recommendations, scholarships, job offers, etc. So here's what I tell my kids. You can cuss with your friends if that's the culture in your squad, but, and this is important, you have to be able to code switch. So let's define code switching quickly. In linguistics, code switching is alternating between two languages within the very same sentence. So that's like when um, the two women in your office are speaking Farsi and every third word is in English. So that's the formal meaning of code switching. I'm using it here in the urban dictionary sense. So here's their definition. To customize the style of speech to the audience or group being addressed. So a lot of times it's used in the black community to signal transitioning between styles of speaking. Thus the example, she talks street to her friends at school, but when she's with her family, she is code switching and speaks proper English. So what I mean here is that your kids have to be able to transition easily and quickly between cussing with their friends and in addressing an adult, and they have to be able to do it with no slip ups. That is not as easy as it sounds. So here's an example. When my husband was right out of law school, he worked at a law firm with a bunch of other associates who were also in their 20s, and they all swore like sailors almost all the time. So around that time, on a visit back to my rural hometown, we visited the grocery store, and somehow in the course of checking out, my husband dropped the F-bomb. So let's just say that the cashier was deeply offended and let him know in no uncertain terms. Now, I don't think she was necessarily in the right to dress down a customer, but it definitely made him think twice. He came to the conclusion that if he couldn't code switch, he needed to consider not cussing at all. And basically, that is what I told my kids. If they can't code switch, they shouldn't be cussing at all. So I consider our house, um, except in times of extreme emotional distress, a practice zone for adult speak. I don't really care that much about the curse words. Most of them don't offend me, but they need an environment where they have to watch their mouths lest they slip up somewhere important and it has an impact on their reputation. So two additional thoughts. Music. Obviously, there are a lot of curse words in modern music that might actually be the understatement of the century. I let my kids play their loud pop and rap music in my car, even if it's riddled with ex expletives. I, I, I wanna hear what they're listening to, Sometimes it is a little too much, particularly when the artist isn't creative enough to come up with any other words, but mostly I try not to focus on the swear words, and instead I focus on the mess messaging. If you get too bogged down in language, you can miss how much outright right violence and misogyny is in these songs. And I want my kids to be able to consider this stuff and think critically about it. What is happening in this song? How are people being treated? Is the music good enough to tolerate that iffy message? Why offensive? The last thing is that I want my kids to think critically about why some words are offensive. 
some words are offensive because they come from the religious world, some are sexual, um, some are mean ways to refer to others. Don't just use the word because it's off limits. Think about what the meaning is and then decide critically if that's a word that you feel comfortable adding to your vocabulary. I find the F-bomb way less offensive than some mean epithets that carry an offensive history. So look, one of my mantras is that we're not raising kids here, we're raising future adults. I find that many times, rather than telling them they can't do something, give them the reasons why they may want to consider a different path. My kids have actually made different decisions on this topic. My son rarely cusses at all. My daughter code switches with some occasional slip-ups at home, which she's actively working on. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.